I'm endlessly dreaming of the next garden, and this year is no exception. Unique, interesting, and lesser known varieties have always been alluring to me as I browse through seed catalogs. For the upcoming spring and summer season, I'm trying several selections for the very first time. A true baby corn, jicama, burdock, and edible gourds, just to name a few. Join me as I discuss what I'm excited to grow in 2022 and follow the new garden road throughout the season to see how this garden theater ensues. What's up everyone, it's Scott from New Garden Road. You know I'm here to inform, inspire, and elevate you. Encouraging biodiversity and restoring habitat is my mission, one garden at a time. So I mentioned that I'm trying some new things and along with certain varieties that I've never grown before. I'm also growing some brands that I've never grown before. For instance, the San Diego Seed Company. This is the first time that I've ordered any of their products. One of the things that I like about them, they really grow for Southern California. However, it seems like Central Texas, it's worthwhile experimenting with some of these varieties because as they are cultivated in that climate, it could have some crossover with the types of thing that we experience, you know, long, hot, dry summers, at high humidity. I haven't grown anything from Kitazawa in many years. They have a lot of really unique Asian varieties and just some things that I just don't find anywhere else. Southern Exposure Seed Exchange has quickly become one of my favorite companies and they just, they offer a really wide array. And much like San Diego Seed Company, they also are in a more Southern climate. So Southern Virginia, and these are cultivated in that region so I think that has some continuity when I'm growing here in Central Texas. It would be great if we had a Central Texas seed company. So I just want to talk a little bit about a few of these. I'm growing a lot more than this right here for the purpose of the video. I'm just sharing some that I'm most excited about. From Southern Exposure Seed Company, baby corn. I couldn't imagine that you could actually grow baby corn. You know, it looks really cool. Check out the seeds. Oh yeah, they're beautiful. I'm gonna grow like a whole four by eight of those. That should be awesome. Whoop, don't lose any. When I was looking at these, it said that they can produce like eight to 10 ears of corn per plant. And also they are early maturing. There's less of a likelihood that the corn earworm is gonna get into them. And one of the other selections that I got from them, these Peking black Southern peas. I love Southern peas, lima beans, long beans. This is a, a black Southern pea. It's just so cool. Wow, I can't wait to grow these. I also like to save seeds and southern peas are a great gateway to doing that. I hope you don't have a peanut allergy. Either way, you're from a safe distance, it should be all good. But I'm trying two distinct varieties, Tennessee Red Valencia and the Carwiles Virginia. So a Virginia and a Valencia peanut. Check this out. If you've never grown peanuts or ever heard of that, yep, it's peanuts. You will take them out of the shell and plant the individual peanuts. I'm not gonna do that just yet because I, I want them to be as viable as possible. They'll do really well in the heat and the humidity that we have they act as a cover crop you know like the the southern peas they're a cover crop but they're also a food crop kitazawa like i said i haven't grown in a long time but when i saw they had jicama seeds i just thought yeah let's do it i love growing root crops tubers see it's yam bean it's it is actually grows like a bean you need a trellis for it and then i think each plant produces one tuber essentially let's take a quick peek at the seeds if we can Wow, look at them. They totally look like beans. They are beans. I don't think you are supposed to eat the beans though. I think they're toxic. Agobo, this is a specific variety of burdock. The leaves are edible. So essentially I'm growing this one for its edible leaves. It will form a root that is edible as well. The cool thing about it is this one is only about a foot long in, in terms of the root structure, which is really perfect for the, the depth that I have here in, in my garden. And the next one that I wanna talk about is this Malokia, also known as Egyptian spinach. That's another warm season green I'm gonna try out. I grew this one once before. I don't think that I was successful. It was probably about 10 years ago. And from San Diego Seed Company, it's hard for me to resist a bean like this. Viva San Diego bush bean. Let's see what they look like on the inside. Whoa, oh, that's far out. Did somebody like spill the beans and then just made a mix? Just like the southern peas or even the peanuts, they're fairly easy to cultivate. And this is the Kokuzi edible gourd. You know, I've grown some loofah once before and I did try those when they were young, about an inch in diameter, and they were pretty tasty. So I imagine this is gonna be similar. This is something I've never tried. You know, as an alternate to the squash that can be difficult to grow due to the squash vine borer, I wanted to give this a shot. I've got a cactus mix zinnia here. I love growing zinnias. Every summer, I've, I've got a lot of them. I probably have about six 
six varieties that I want to try this year. That should be a lot of fun. And zinnias are another one that I found it's very easy to save the seeds from. I'm going to be growing several other varieties of flowers throughout the season. I love to grow cosmos, sunflowers, borage, and I have some poppies and larkspur that are already growing from a fall sowing. They're starting to send up some bloom heads and I can't wait for those to pop. Got a couple other things I want to tell you about. You might be interested to know that I don't have an indoor seed starting setup. It's something that I'm working towards. However, that doesn't mean that I don't propagate things other than direct seeding in the garden. Sweet potatoes are something that I love to grow through the heat of summer and those can be easily sprouted from mature sweet potatoes. I've got a pretty good video about it. If you want to check it out, I'll drop a link in the description. I also have two other varieties of potatoes, regular potatoes growing, and this year I tried something different. I'm growing them in containers. The red Pontiac and the Yukon Gold are two varieties that I had growing last year and I didn't utilize all of them. However, I didn't throw them in the compost or the trash. Either. I just put them in my shed. They made it through the winter and they started to sprout and that indicates to me that they are ready to grow. Chayote is another crop that I am really eager to get growing. You can sprout that from a whole chayote that you get from the store and then plant that in the ground. Hopefully I can get one established and it could overwinter into the following season. Two other things that I've been experimenting with, you know, after buying store-bought ginger and turmeric, I thought, why not grow my own? Typically I don't see much from my turmeric or ginger until about May and then they start to leaf out with the hot weather. From there it's a bit of a long haul. You're talking you know nine months or more before they are essentially mature but what usually happens is in November or early December after the first frost the top growth will die back and that's a good time to harvest. Citrus trees are something that I am head over heels in love with and I have a large collection and they've been overwintering in a high tunnel greenhouse. That's how I keep them protected. Most of them are in containers. I do have one that's in ground and I did get a new addition already. The Dwarf Kara Kara Orange just really caught my eye and I couldn't resist. I've got several videos on citrus, including a playlist if you want to check that out. Alliums are something that we typically plant in the fall or in the late winter here, and that goes for garlic and bulbing onions. I've got two nice crops growing right now. I actually did garlic in a raised bed and some containers this year. Again, just experimenting. And also, sometimes you run out of room, maybe you wanna try something new. Growing in a container has advantages. There is so much to grow in the garden. I have already spent a lot of time visualizing it, and I, I can't wait to bring this garden forward. and just different ways that I can learn from my, my own gardening practice throughout the season. Now check out more awesome gardening videos on my channel. Like this video and follow New Garden Road for weekly content. You can grow your own food. Keep it organic.